Painter, welcome to Six Stand Face of Rock. How are you doing today? Good, good. Good to see you today, Marcus. All right. uh, happy for having us on. Power here. hell, right? So, yeah. how did you guys get together? So this band actually started as a kind of a solo project I just put together myself uh, well uh, during kind of the COVID lockdown back in 2020. And uh, I jammed with a few of the other guys kind of during uh, during uh, my other old band Valeria, which played uh, melodic death metal. Mm -hmm. um, Christian as well, our other guitarist, actually he and I played in a power metal band together that never really got off the ground. And then once we got the record deal for Tower Hill, it uh, seemed natural to kind of recruit the rest of the guys together. And since then we've been, uh, been going strong for about now three years, so really pumped. Um, what did you want this band to be like once, once you got this concept going? Pardon me? What did you want this band to be like? Oh, yeah, well, really, it was inspired a lot by kind of like um, sort of that late 80s, early 90s style of uh, heavy power metal where kind of it, uh, you know, they sound like a bit of both subgenres there in a one. Really thinking albums like uh, Blaze and Stone by Running Wild. Um, Painkiller by Judas Priest, some of the mid-era of Riot stuff, kind of that uh, that early 90s, late 80s heavy power metal sound. So we're really targeting for that kind of space with our uh, our last album, Death Stalker, which uh, came out last last fall on No Remorse Records. So who are the band members? You said you you, you got the band members. Yeah, once you got so the, yeah, go in, so. I'm the singer in the band, and uh, I, I wrote some of the songs on our, our first album. Uh, the rest of the band here, we've got uh, Mitchell on drums, Jeremy on guitar, Chris on guitar as well, and then Cam on bass. Uh, and, uh, we're really looking forward to uh, to working together as a band here, especially for some of the songwriting on our new album. And I think it's been more of a diverse direction with everybody in the band contributing new songs to the record. Uh, as you were writing the songs, when did you realize you kind of onto something? I think actually it was when uh, I wrote the first song for the project ever, actually. It was uh, The Claw is the Law. Mm -hmm. So that one I actually wrote several years ago, and it kind of sat, sat on my hard drive for a bit until I came up with uh, <laughs> some pretty funny lyrics for it. And then that kind of came together, and you know, it got a bit of traction once we released it as a single. And after that, it kind of kind of popped off. So, really, uh, that's when we kind of thought we could be on to on to something here with it with that song. What was your metal scene like in Edmonton? Uh, it's 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 good actually. There's a uh, it's a lot of death metal, a lot of death metal. Uh, there's not too too many bands playing kind of power or heavy metal, but there's a few more that have been been starting, especially. And we like to think that we've uh, you know helped inspire people to pick up uh, the old school sound a bit more at Edmonton. Why the name Tower Hill? Actually, Tower Hill was, uh, I got it from this old, really crappy apartment I used to live in with an ex-girlfriend of mine. <laughs> and uh, my other roommate and me, a good friend of mine, we uh, always thought, oh, Tower Hill, you know, that's a shitty apartment would be a great name for an old school metal band. And it turns out it was, so. Yeah. Um, how did you get signed to uh, No Remorse Records? Well, after we released our demo, which had a Clause of the Law on it and a few of our other songs, uh, it actually got a, a pretty good amount of traction on the New Wave of Traditional Heavy Metal uh, YouTube channel there. Uh, Anderson Tiago runs that channel, great guy, a uh, big supporter of this genre of, of the scene. So once that kind of got a bit of a hype, actually, I think it came across the radar for No Remorse, and they, they reached out to us and made us a pretty uh, pretty solid offer that we were very happy with, and we were uh, thrilled to sign. I've been a big fan of that label for a while. They've got some really, really great bands, you know, like uh, Eternal Champion. They uh, worked on the new, the new Heavy Load album. A uh, big fan of Dolman Gate on there, and of course, our uh, Alberta brothers and Traveler in Riot City. So we're uh, happy to join No Remorse. Honor to be on there. Uh, your album, Deathstalker, came yeah. out last year. What can you tell me about it? Mm. So Deathstalker was was pretty fun. Uh, the the title actually is inspired by uh, the old uh, it's a uh, uh, late '80s, I believe, uh, fantasy movie. sword and sorcery movie, film. Yeah. yeah, pretty fun. So we kind of got the idea to run with that, and the album artwork and the song were both inspired by that movie. Uh, we worked with Andreas Marshall from uh, you know Blind Guardian, Running Wild fame, to design a really cool cover art based on the Deathstalker character. And then that really was a lot of the songs that I had had kind of floating around that we sort of solidified and workshop as a band. And we were uh, really happy to put something out, kind of. A, you know, pretty back to basics, stripped down, heavy, heavy metal album. So it was a lot of fun. What response did you get to, to the album? What inspired us? No response. Oh, I think we got a pretty good response actually. Yeah, we uh, we sold out of records very quickly, so that, that was good. 
Uh, and obviously we're down here in beautiful Chicago playing Leaps of Metal, so I, I'd say we're pretty happy with the response that we got. Definitely. Uh, do you think that Stalker is a fair representation of where the band is at right now, or are you still kind of searching musically? I, I think so. I, I do think we are. It's definitely representative of our sound. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have a few songs that are a bit get kind of more experimental. Not. I don't I use that word lightly, but uh, kind of stretching the boundaries a bit on the next album, but it's still very reflective of uh, what our sound is, what our sound always will be, and the type of music we want to play. Uh, were you able to do any tours or any, any live appearances once the album came out? This actually is our, uh, our first real tour since that album okay. came out. We did play a couple dates with, uh, with Spell from Vancouver mm -hmm. back at uh, Edmonton and Calgary near the album release. And then this is our, uh, our North American tour actually starting tonight here at Leaders of Metal here at, uh, at Reggie's in Chicago. Uh, when you play a show, what kind of image do you display? I think we want to, uh, you know, obviously we, we do take ourselves seriously, but we want to make sure that we're having a good time mm -hmm. and that the audience is having a good time as well. So uh, we do want to project that fun, high energy, heavy metal image. We, we, we aim for that. Any new songs you'll be working on? Actually, yes. Uh, we've got a couple that we're working on. Uh, there's this one that we're uh, workshopping right now. It's called Out of the Dark. It's uh, more of a kind of uh, 80s AOR sound, you know, a bit of like, uh, like a Night Flight Orchestra or that Turbo album by Judas Priest, and then we've got another one called uh, La Fin du Monde about driving across Canada, and that one's uh, really inspired by kind of like uh, mid-air Iron Maiden, you know, pretty bouncy, kind of similar to The Claws of the Law, so same vein as that. Finally, what's next for you? What's next for us? Well, we got a show in, uh, we're playing tonight, and Reggie's obviously coming up really soon. And then tomorrow we have a gig in uh, Madison with the amazing Lords of the Trident, our friends in Lycanthro, and a fantastic local act called Queen of Dreams. And then on uh, Sunday we're in Minneapolis. Uh, we also got some shows coming up with Stryker at the end of the month, and a few more with uh, our friends in The Scepter and our label mates, actually, in Eastern Canada this summer. So, lots in the works. Excellent. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks for your time here, Marcus.